two already live we are live <laughs> for another episode of nfg radio we are back we made it to three weeks guys we're also live on instagram for the time being until my phone dies if my phone dies shadow will go live by himself um <laughs> but make sure you come on youtube and ask us questions because i'll be able to see it right here and put it on the screen and we can ask you your, your answer those questions how's it going man how's the how's quarantine life week you know it's crazy. We're getting a lot of uh, requests by people, which I'm liking. Uh, yeah, I've had a lot of people relate to me that they like the show. <laughs> sweet, sweet, that's awesome. Just glad good. to hear it. I've also had a lot of people relate to me, like, "Hey, man, I would love to for you to talk about wrestling news. What's going on?" Yeah. All right. Cool. So, I've gotten that request. Yeah. yeah no, I understand. I get that. People yeah. are popping in. Oh, got Priscilla in here. <laughs> What's going on, Priscilla? What's going on, Priscilla? We got Joe J Cash here. What's going on, J Cash? What's going on? How are we all doing? Um, I do. Uh, I do want to just ask you because last week was Money in the Bank. Did you see the concept? Did you see how the match was? About what? The Money in the Bank match. How do you feel about it? The concept of the headquarters. Did you catch any highlights of it or anything? I caught. You know what? I didn't watch the pay per view. Yeah. You watch pay per view. Uh, I normally don't watch WWE pay per views, but yeah. I saw, uh, clips of the, of the of the entire thing like on Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, JTG just messaged me. Yeah. <laughs> Send him the link if he wants to hop in. You can hop in. All he needs uh, is the he's, link. He's got, he's got to finish some stuff. Some stuff before he gets over here. So Fair enough. He gets over here. So JT is actually coming over today because we're gonna go walk him on the beach and we're gonna go drink. And just medibles and have fun. <laughs> so, so anybody that asks, are, are GTG Shad's friends? They clearly still are. Yeah. Time to hang together. We still hang out on a regular. <laughs> yeah. So you so you caught the highlights. Do you have any thoughts on it, or what do you think? Like uh, I I appreciated the creativity behind it. I think it was a good. I, I appreciate the creativity. Um, I, I I didn't quite. I mean, I got a lot of things, man. Baron Corbin threw two guys off the roof. He threw a ray off the roof, but then it was like on a pad, and it's like I, you know, again, I fucking hate always giving him credit, but Jim Cornette was right. <laughs> yeah, you can't. There's only so much elevation you can go to in a match where it's like, okay, you know, all right, we just threw somebody off a roof. How do we top that? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Where do we go from 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 there? It's it's one of those things where the creatively, man, the food fight thing, it was like, all right, that was interesting. You know, Naya and uh, Otis clashing on Ray, interesting. Uh, I think my best part that I like the things I saw was like the thing with Vince. Yeah, that was funny. The only, the only thing that I thought was unreal though was it, it's like Vince not. Fighting, joining in on a fight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're gonna fuck this shit up, and he's gonna be like, "Now get out of here." He's gonna be yeah. like, "I want to fight." <laughs> um, I will say this: Jim Cornette did kind of ruin it because uh, when we were recording the TWC show, Devin was telling me how he was like, the one thing that really messed it up for him was the fact that the the headquarters is only four floors. Yeah. And the fact that these guys were stopping on every floor instead of going straight to the roof when they knew that everything was on the roof <laughs> kind of yeah. didn't make sense. And I'm like, I was like, oh, why did you have to tell me that? Because that does kind of ruin the whole concept. Like, why wouldn't you have just like gone up the four flight of stairs and tried to win the match? Yeah. That, that, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, that's actually right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's one of those things. It's one of those, it's, it's, it's one of those double edged coins. You know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, well, if they, had one staircase close, like if, if you if you if you go up one set of staircase, right? Yeah. Then you're forced to get up on the second floor. You know what I mean? And then it's like everybody's fighting to get on the elevator, and the elevator stops at the third floor. But then the staircase starts again on the third floor. Yeah. It's like, like it's like that kind of concept. It's like now it makes sense. But that's that's forward thinking. Yeah. And a lot of times in the company. People aren't thinking about the next five steps. They're thinking about right now, how can we get this over with? What's cool? What's They're thinking about all the things that, you know, like I, like Marvel. I love Marvel movies. Everybody loves Marvel movies. They actually put a lot of thought process into what the diehard fans are going to be negative about. 
And because of that, they go in an option and they try to build around that negativity. You know, if we're going to change about the character, if we're going to change about the story, you know, we're going to make sure all these little things add up to where you go, whoa, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That to me is more like, here's this really cool idea. Okay, great. How does that add up? Nobody cares about that. And I've been, it's like, I've been in meetings where we've had that, where it's like, you know, oh, we want you guys to do this. And we're like, all right, cool. That makes no sense. We, we just beat those guys like a week yeah. ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they're going to beat you at night and then you'll beat them later down the road because we're trying to build their team. What? I mean, we don't mind losing, but why are we, but why are we losing? Like, I remember we had a thing with Shelton and Charlie and uh, we had to beat Shelton and Charlie and, Sh- and Shelton just had a singles match. We just fucking dominated. It was awesome. And, this, and we weren't even together. And then we had to do a tag match together, and then it was like, okay, the falls on Shelton, and we were like, why? Like because we because we said so. Well, he's coming up. He just he just had a victory as a singles competitor, and now you're having to fall on him. Why don't you have the fall go on Charlie, and then have Shelton get mad at him, and then have uh, Charlie have to step it up, and so now he's extra motivated, and so when they next time they win. Charlie gets the win instead of Shelton getting the win. Yeah, we don't we don't think that far ahead. We're not worried about that. We're worried about tonight. Yeah, so that's you exactly. sometimes underestimate the logic that wrestling fans look at. Like that doesn't make sense. It seems like it happens quite a bit, to be honest. Well, to be honest with you, I think I, I know guys like Brian Gerwitz never want to underestimate the wrestling fans' uh, intellect. Uh, and yeah. Comedy. Never want to uh, uh, underestimate the wrestling fans, you know, understanding the business. Even even, even uh, Paul Hunter, you know what I'm saying? He was like, yo, our fans aren't stupid. But I remember sitting there and some people in creative were like, oh, they're dumb. You know what I'm saying? They're just yeah. like the, fan, oh, the fans. The fans don't know what happened last week. No, you don't know because you're being bombarded by an overbearing boss. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You forgot what happened last week, but the fans, they're die hard. They live for this. So they know everything meticulously. Me and Jason, all we 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 we're told about matches that we've had and we forgot about them. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, 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 like uh I was scrolling through Instagram and I'm just I'm just like scrolling and I seen a match and I was like, oh, that's a pretty good. Ma- oh shit, that's me. When I have that match, and I was like, I don't remember wrestling that. Yeah. You know, maybe, so, um, someone here, um, his name's Ben. He asked if you have any interest. He, he's on the Instagram live. Guys, if you want to ask questions, it's a lot easier for me to read them if you come on to the YouTube live stream here at the Wrestling Classic YouTube channel. But he asked, or, do you have any interest of uh, Impact Wrestling or NWA? Have you checked either one of those out? Well, Impact's been around forever, but NWA is fairly new. The studio. Oh, right. NWA. So is NWA studio, is, is, is it done in L.A.? I believe it's done in like uh, Atlanta somewhere, or maybe Nashville, one of those Who states. Was, what's his name? Runs that? What's Dave Lagana. Dave Lagana and uh, the Dave Lagana. Smashing, I saw Dave Lagana and, and the Smashing Pumpkins guy. If you got Billy Corgan, those two. Yo, so I lo- so Dave Lagana had a huge incident when we were when we were there with a couple of guys. Yeah. And uh, I remember, like, I had a so I remember I had to give Dave Lagana. I gave my idea. And yeah. I'm telling, and like, uh, like this is when I'm still like a rookie. I'm in OVW. And I gave him the idea, and uh, he was like, "Okay, go ahead, pitch it to me." And so I start pitching him the idea, and he goes, "Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh." And he looks away, he looks around, and he's looking at somebody. And I go, "Yo, man, what the fuck is your problem?" And he goes, "Excuse me." I go, "What the fuck is your problem?" I'm talking to you. You gonna look around, motherfucker? And like, I'm still in this thug mindset that I have. <laughs> yeah. And so Logano was like, "No, no, no, calm down, chat." I was like, "Nah, man." To... <laughs> and like he was like, I remember I saw him like a few months ago, and yeah. he saw me the thing, and he was like, "Cause like, you know, Dave, Dave's a good guy. Overall, Dave's a good guy. But at some at one point, Dave was kind of you know pushing, rubbing people the wrong way. You yeah. know what I'm saying?" And when you do that to, to the wrong guys that are our size, they want to fucking wring your neck. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
so he he literally thought I was like had like negative feelings towards him. I was like, nah, bro, I'm I'm good. And I saw him and I was like, yo, what up? And he was with a couple of my boy, uh, Mickey's husband. Uh, what's his name? He was the NWA champion for a long time, right? Nick Aldis. Yeah, Nick Aldis. Yeah, Mick James' husband. And so we like, were just talking, and he, was, and he was like, hey, I thought you were mad at me. I was like, what? He's like, oh, you know, a few years ago, I said this about you. And I was like, bro, I don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> I was like, bro, I don't, I, don't, I don't think about these things, bro. <laughs> have, you, have you watched any of NWA? Have you seen some of the studio shows? I see some on, of them on, on, on my Instagram because uh, I, have, I have friends who, are, who, who work for the company. Yeah, you know what I'm saying so. I, I mean, I, I see things. I like I like that it's an old school format. I like that it's an old school way of doing things. Um, I just want to see how the fans react to it. You know, our fan base. You got you got to say you can only force feed them old school so much without putting any new school flavor in it. Yeah, and that old school format will bring the yesteryear fans back. But will it attract new fans? That's true. That's the that's the whole thing with anything you're doing in entertainment. You're trying to attract new fans, and right now the problem is is that WWE for so long has been saying "fuck you" to the current fans that the current fans are leaving. Yeah, because they're just like I don't they're like I don't want to watch this while I'm in quarantine. I'm I'm literally getting more depressed watching this, and there are no new fans coming on board. With any buzz about it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, buzz worthy about what's going on, uh, which is sad because Drew as champion is buzz worthy. It's very buzz worthy. Braun is buzz worthy. Becky having a baby, buzz worthy. Okay, Seth thinking he's Jesus, yeah. buzz worthy. All right, these are yeah. all things that fans should be attracted to, but I, I just don't. People aren't finding interest because they're like, "Yo, man, this isn't." You're not. You're not talking to anything that's relevant to me. Yeah. Nothing you say is relevant. You know what I mean? Here's a question I think will will will, will be uh, something that will be an interesting story. Talk to about Shad and JTG selling Lita stuff as stories, and they get to keep the money they got from the fan. We kind of yes. talked about this, but yeah. Yeah, we got to keep the money. <laughs> <laughs> Were you allowed to, or did you guys just keep it? No, we just kept it. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, so what happened was is that we didn't have any plants and Vince was worried about it. And Vince was like, we're going to put some plants out there with a couple of hundred bills. And I was like, I'm not going to your plants, old man. And he yeah. was like, no, 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 no. We're going to make it, make it good. Make sure. I was like, if I can't, I was, like, I was like, yo, I can sell water to a well, man. All right. So let me go sell and just let us do our thing. And he's like, okay, cool. The one thing that's missed that people don't understand about this is we knew this was uh, Amy's last match. And yeah. Adam told us, and so while Amy's in her locker room with Adam, we came in there and we sat down with her and we said, hey, Amy, we know what's going on. Fuck that. We're willing to take the heat. Are these things cool with you? And Amy was like, all right, go through it. And we were like, this, this. She was like, oh, that's hilarious. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, they said you're going to like sell my like Al- Alanis Morissette CD. I don't sell it. And so like, they, like the company had all these like weird things they wanted us to sell that were just lame. And so we came up with the underwear and the things like that. And, you know, the toothbrush that was, yeah. it was like, it was like Amy's little friend. Cause we we're PG. <laughs> like, all right. And she was like, Oh, that's hilarious. She's like, when you guys do that, I'm like, I want to buy that back. I need that. That's my little buddy. <laughs> and you watch it. That she, she goes, no, I need that. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was honestly it was one of the funniest scenes I remember when she retired. Well, and then you like, thought it was supposed to be like a sad moment, but she was going out as a heel. So like for you guys to come out there and do that, I was like, oh, that's fitting. That's fitting. Like, it's like people are like, oh, why would you do that? I'm like, bro, you don't know our family. It's like you don't go out on top. That's not how it's business. Yeah. Nobody goes out on a, on, a, on a white horse riding into the sunset. Not yeah. Rick, still not Amy, not Ric Flair, nobody. You go out passing. You go out as a loser. That's a champion right there. You yeah. Know? I agree. I agree. I actually have a qu- We have questions coming in, guys. My phone's at right. 10%. If you guys want to ask questions, be sure to come to uh, the YouTube live here on the Wrestling Classic YouTube channel because my phone will die. I have a question for you because something actually I've been thinking, I've thought about since last year. Yeah. And I never picked your brain about it yet because you were going to keep doing this. But why not now? Kofi Mania. What did it really mean to you guys? Like, remember that clip uh-huh. of you and MVP? 
breaking into tears watching Kofi win the championship. For me personally, when I thought about Kofi Mania and I was there live in the crowd, for me, like that was that should have been the main event because everything after that kind of seems like a blur. That was like the peak of the night. You know, Kofi winning the WWE Championship was the peak of the night. You know what was crazy? Uh, Jason went to the it went to Mania. Yeah, uh, with our good friend uh, Jazz, and I got invited to go to Mania and go in the family and friends section upstairs. And I was like, ah, oh, man, my back hurts, I'm tired. But you know, we've been doing the whole weekend. I was like, I'm not gonna go. Then the guys at the Jabba Tier podcast, they actually were like, hey, why don't you come to our event? And I was like, cool. And they wanted me to meet uh, a, a wrestler to talk to. And so I met him and we talked and we were walking. And as we were walking down in Manhattan, right, uh, we saw I saw a bar sign that said, yeah, wrestling something. And I remember Instagram had it. And I was like, wait a minute, I know these guys. And I walked in there and MVP just happened to be there. Yeah. And we just started talking and it was the craziest, like, just thing because Kobe's match came on. And so we just started, and so I was like, we started watching. While watching, I don't know, I don't even know what, I, I remember, I just, I just, I just said, turned to a dude, and I was like, hey, my man, can you do me a favor? Because he's watching TV behind us. Can yeah. He get the bar. And I was like, can you record this, man? And so we record, so he recorded it, and we're sitting there, and we completely forgot he was recording us. Yeah. We completely forgot he was recording. And we just sat there, and we're watching. And that was the most organic moment. And me and Kofi were just me and me and uh, uh, P were just going through everything, and we we're like, okay. And the thing, Kofi didn't tell us that he was winning. Yeah. Kofi didn't tell me, MVP, Mark Henry, Shelton, none of us. None of us wanted to know. We were like, we're going to watch and just see what happens, and we're going to naturally react. That's it. Just do your fucking best. And he was like, cool. And he never gave anything away. No, and the vibe was high because the reason I brought this up is earlier this week I had a casual conversation with Emilio Sparks, who was yeah. one of the main people behind Wale Mania, which yeah. we were both at. And that night was a big, there was a big push of like, you know, Booker T made a big toast about, you know, this weekend's really about Kofi. If he wins this, it's for, you know, it's not about Booker T, it's not about these Harley Me, it's about Kofi Kingston. Yeah. And, you know, you know, Emilio and Kaz had Kofi sneak in there with the New Day, and you guys were on the stage. You and JTG, oh, like, I have the videos. You and JTG put Kofi on your shoulders. And I was no, like, no, so, so, no, 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 no. This is the funny thing. So, yeah. uh, Kofi was like, hey, are you guys going to Wally Man thing? I was like, nah, man. I was like, nah, yo, fuck that. I'm being in Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> and so we didn't tell him. So when when you saw me come up from backstage, Kofi didn't know we were there. Uh, Xavier didn't know we were there. And I went, and I, I literally went behind him, and I went underneath him and just picked him up. Yeah, and that's like that's something that I got, I've done to a lot of a lot of the guys. And so Xavier and uh, <laughs> E were like, "Yo, Kofi's getting bigger." <laughs> <laughs> and Kofi's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> And he's like, I knew you were gonna be here. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like I was now when I when I talked to Emilio, I was thinking about that weekend. I'm like, dude, like it was just in the air, like. I don't. I think like it's been a year now, and it, it, you know time has gone by. But that Kofi Mania movement was something else, and it meant a lot to a lot of people. Mostly, a lot of people that were in the wrestling industry that might have not gotten that opportunity or never fully got that opportunity. We've talked about how you almost got that opportunity, but it didn't come to full fruition because of situations. And it's like you know what's crazy is that I worked my ass off, and I was mm. mind. I was like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna get a world title. Like I was like, all right, I got, I got the size, I got, the, I got, I can cut a promo, I got everything necessary to get a world title. I was like, okay, I'll get the WC, I can get the WCW title. I, I was like, that's what I'm gonna get. And then when I was told that I was gonna get an opportunity to get the WWE title, that's when I started yeah. kind of like freaking out. And then I think a part of me started kind of like denying. So because I because I knew the negativity associated with black wrestlers and that title, I automatically try to motivate myself by being more arrogant and cocky. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so it was like, okay, and you know, to have to have Vince be on board, like not for like one of the agents to be on board or the writers to be like, oh, she has to be WWE champion, but for Vince to be like, you're gonna be our next wwe champion like our big wwe champion like 
you know, I, yeah. think, I think like my mindset said, no, this is not going to happen. You know, you ain't shit because that's how we're, that, that's, that's, that's how we're conditioned constantly. Yeah. And so my mindset automatically went to being super arrogant, reinforcing it. Like I remember, I remember I got told that in around December or January, right? And so I knew going into Mania that me and Jason after Mania were going to break up, right? Yeah. We knew it. We, were, we, were, we knew it was going to happen. It was like, you're going to be a WWE champion. So we knew it was going to happen. And for that to happen, I had to turn heel and I got to fight Cena. And we knew Cena was going to be a, a, a heel. So, of course, I got to be heel. Yeah. And going into Mania, uh, going from January all the way up to Mania, I just remember uh, training in Houston, Texas. And I was doing more MMA and uh, more Muay Thai than ever before. And I just, and I, I remember I, I was just like, just like trying to get my confidence around being a WWE champion. Yeah. And the amount of hate I would get, not from fans, but from the boys. Why would that be? And I just want to point out for those that don't know, and for those that aren't aware why it was such a big deal, um, I know it's been documented and talked about a ton since Kofi won the belt and not, but there was 53 WWE, 52 or 53 WWE champions in, in the history of the WWE title, and there had not been one African American, fully African American heavyweight yeah, champion. Because like, like, like DJ's, D, DJ's African American. Yeah. The only the thing about it is like this DJ's African American, the only thing about it is is that people don't want him to be African-American, so they only call him Samoan. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, like we, I remember me and him had a conversation, and I he said, it's the craziest thing being in Hawaii, and anytime I got in a fight, it was that nigga got in a fight. That's so crazy. And you know what I'm saying? Being in Florida, that nigga got in a fight. Being in, 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 in PA, that nigga got in a fight. But the moment, the moment he made a tackle, man, that's a bone who play football. The moment he succeeded in WWE, man, the Samoan, hey, 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 bada, hey, bada. Yeah. It's like, yo, word, what up, bada? I wasn't your bada like four years ago when we could get off the island. I wasn't your brother when, you know, my mom's was struggling to put the, and my grandma was struggling to put the promotion on, you know? You guys kind of shitted on us. Yeah. You, you remember when you overcharged my grandma? Yeah, I remember that. But hey, you know, it's a, it's a, let weird, me, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. Let me so yeah, so let me ask you about that. And my point was that there's been there's been African American world heavyweight champions, Mark Henry, Booker T, whatnot, but there hadn't been an African American WWE champion after 53 champions of, yeah. who won that belt, and there was a big deal. And and I, I, you now you made me want to change my question because I do have a question about The Rock. There is a stigma with the fans. Not all fans. Some fans are like, oh, he likes to play his Samoan card more than his African-American card. He doesn't like to say embrace that he's African-American. He, he embraces the Samoan side more. Do you think that's – like, obviously, it's not true. I know that's not true. You know that's not true. But do you think that's a fault of how he's been, like, presented to the world as, a, as an entertainer and a wrestler? I have, my, my son is mixed. Okay? Yeah. Uh, my son is very proud of his Haitian heritage, uh, his Caribbean heritage. You know, like if you see my son, my son is walking around, stop by, say, not nah, Yeah. <laughs> like, all the, like, like the, the kid loves being Haitian, you know? Um, he loves his mother. Yeah. When he was a little kid and we sent him to go do tutoring with Bulgarians, right? And I had to go pick him up. They, they kind of like shunned him. You know what I'm saying? Because he wasn't Bulgarian enough, you know? And the, the moment, they, as soon as they found out that his dad was black, they're like, oh, your mother is a whore. Da, 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 da. It's like, what did you say? Yeah. Okay. But I've never denied his, his heritage of being Bulgarian. I actually encourage it, you know, because I want to know more. Uh, Dwayne, DJ, I can't speak for him. 100%. I can only know how, how from what I know from Rocky Johnson, but Rocky, he loved his African, African heritage, but his family heritage wasn't all that great to him, which is why he created, he, he recreated himself as Rocky Johnson, you know? And yeah. Dwayne's a mama's boy. 
And while while Rocky was on the road being Rocky Johnson to the world, he wasn't being dad to Dwayne. And it's yeah. like disconnect with that. You know, like I'm with my son all the fucking time. You know what I'm saying? We're at the beach and we're fucking shoveling sand. Yeah. The ditch training. You know, we're, we're sledgehammering stuff. We're fucking shot putting stuff. We're doing things together all the time. You know, I'll speak Papimentu. You know, it's, it's my dialect from Curaçao. Uh, we'll talk about Tucson, Shaka Zulu. We'll, do, we'll talk about all the kind of things about our culture. You know, I don't know Dwayne's history of with his dad to the effect of did he get that much. But yeah. I know that he is proud proud to be a black man you know what i'm saying yeah i just wanted someone that actually knows him to say that because there's this weird perception that like when we talk about this situation like oh there's yeah. never been an african in WWE championship people will be like they'll dis they'll discount Dwayne. they'll say like they'll say the rock doesn't count because he doesn't accept this part of it and it's like i don't think that's the case he is half so there is an argument there but i don't think there's an argument that he isn't you know like he he disregards his black heart or whatever, you know? He has when he's successful. Yeah. But when he fucks up, he is full black. Yeah. And that's the perception of people. He's only half when he's doing something nice and kind and he's successful. But the moment he fucks up, look at when he went to the nation domination. Yeah. Dwayne was called nigger just as much as Ron Simmons as much as Kama, as much as, you know, say Mark and, and D'Lo. Why? Because he, because in people's perception of him, he was doing wrong. Yeah. So when he's, when he's a heel, he ain't nothing but a nigga. That's what they see. That's what, that's how they feel. It's, it's such a sad disconnect that it has to be that way. You know what I'm saying? But when he's doing good and he's successful, oh, you know, he's have Samoan. Yeah. That's I get that. Oh, you know he's Samoan, right? Yeah. Oh, no, the Rock is Samoan. Well, look at him. He's more Samoan. There is no DNA that says I'm more black than the next man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My great grand I, I have two great grandparents that are white. Okay. My great grandfather, all right, and my great grandmother on my on my dad's side. All right. One is French, one is Dutch and Jewish. Okay. Now I'm light skinned. Does that mean I'm not black enough? To be a black wrestler? Yeah. Oh, because, yeah. Oh, because because your, your your interpretation of what black is supposed to be is me. Okay, cool. My wife is white. Oh, you can't. You're not. You're not. You're not black no more. Because my wife is white. I've dated black women, white women, Asian women. Just so happened to this, you know, people don't even know my wife is white. They think she's Latin. Yeah. <laughs> she's Bulgarian. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's, like, it's 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 people, it's people's perception, but. If you had to ask the man, the man himself would say, I'm a proud black man. I'm yeah. Proud to be Samoan. You know what I'm saying? Proud to be Polynesian. But I am a black man. And he said that many a times. It's other people that are like, say it again. Say it again. Yeah, I think I don't know why they, they, they need that clarification. I think he embraces both perfectly fine. I just think they're they you know, WWE they like to link him to that the Simone family a lot and then it's just, it kinda got lost in translation, you know. Other than that though, like was there ever a reason why besides like obviously there can't be just one reason. Was it just like timing or was there ever a reason why it took so long for there to be a fresh African American WWE champion? Uh in all honesty, agents, man. <laughs> yeah. It's in good old boys. You know, yeah. agents and good old boys. Yo, man, you have no you have no idea how many times I've dealt with racist shit backstage with somebody who thought they knew something about me, and they were like, "Oh, well, you know, well, you can't be doing that, son. That's 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 more a fight move." Yeah, I fought in Thailand. You fought in Thailand? Well, how'd you get there? By a plane? What, what are you talking about, dude? You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I, I remember uh, Barry Windham, and Barry Windham said to me, he said, you are too good for your own good. Yeah. And one night we were out, and we're chilling, and we're, I think we were in, we are somewhere in Canada, and Barry was like, man, not a day in my life have I ever been a racist, but God damn, I've been around some racist motherfuckers that if they saw you, they'd have put a bullet in you right away. Yeah. Scary, son. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he's he, he like he was like, 
there are like if you see me, if, if, if you get in a fight with me, yeah, I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck you up. That's just the way it is. <laughs> yeah, but most white Southerners back in the day, they didn't have that. They didn't take that shit. They 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 literally put a gun to your head. Tony Atlas. But all the fun and games people have about Tony Atlas, you know, stuttering and being stupid. Tony Atlas told me a story that made me want to cry. And he goes, he was in North Carolina and Dusty was there and he's there and they were going around and they were doing a Tony Atlas bench press challenge. And Tony, would, they would they'd put four or five on the bench and Tony Atlas would come through and he'd come into the bar, lit it up, str- pretend to struggle it because it was easy way for him. And then yeah. he did it, right? And then uh, one night he's doing it, and he gets it up. And they put the, they put the bench press in the ring, and he gets it up. And for some reason, it's really getting hard. And he looks over, and Dusty's just jumping up and down. They're like, "Come on, Daddy, come on!" <laughs> and so he's like, "Dusty, stop jumping, stop jumping, stop jumping!" <laughs> and so finally, he gets it up and he racks it up. Right? <laughs> and Dusty's like, "That's my boy." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Dusty was Dusty was one of a kind, clearly. But he said, so he goes, so now he has a match coming up, right? And so he goes backstage and he's getting dressed, and they're in his tent. And a guy comes up to him while he's placing his boots and he goes, Man, you that boy that just pinch press all that weight, right? He goes, he goes, Yeah, I am. Dominant. And he goes back to put on his boots. He goes, You got a match coming up, don't you? Tony goes, yes, I do. I have a match coming up right now. I'm trying to get ready. So if you don't mind, and she goes like this, and as soon as he turns to look over his shoulder like this, there's a gun pointed at his head. Yeah. The guy says, you're going to die, ain't you, nigga? You're going to lose, ain't you, nigga? And Tony did the only thing he knew to do, which what his mom told him. The smarter you are, the deader you are. And he went, oh, yes, sir. I, I'm going I'm to probably lose. I'm going to lose. Oh, I'm going to lose to that boy right there. And he dumbed down himself. And he took that moment and he stretched it out throughout his life in moments where he knew he wasn't allowed to be Tony Atlas. He wasn't allowed to be this, 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 this epic man. Okay? You look at Tony Atlas in high school. He was 250, 260. 22 inch arms. Yeah. Man, he wasn't allowed to be a man. So he forced himself to dumb down. And that just ate up inside of him. And it was razor blades. He's kept on swallowing. You know what I'm saying? And then for him to go now be tagged with Rocky Johnson of all people. <laughs> yeah. Rocky Johnson of all people. A man who literally doesn't know how. To make himself smaller. Yeah. Well, what happens is Tony starts to get scared. Yeah. Rocky won't let himself be dumbed down. Rocky ain't having that shit. And so when they go out and somebody says, you boys going to lose, ain't you? And they pull out a gun. Rocky goes, motherfucker, you about to die right now, bitch. What the fuck's your problem? <laughs> yeah. Because that's Rocky Johnson. Yeah. And I remember we, Tony was talking to me. He was like, boy, I see you one of Rockies. You got that attitude in you. Yeah. And can you, you think can't nobody fucking stop? These motherfuckers don't want you to win. They want you to lose. You better get to the game quick. And I was like, Tony, I ain't playing that game bullshit. Man, you better play that game. I was like, Tony, I'm not playing that game. Fuck that. You know? Yeah. That's the way that's my mentality. I I always felt bad because so many people look down on Tony for just doing the only thing that he knew to do in, in those circumstances. You yeah. Know? All he knew to do was, man, it's not man tanning. It was a survival thing, man. It was, man, I, I, I can't be a smart. I can't be this smart. I can't be this strong. I can't be this fast. I can't be this good. And he would dumb himself down. And because of that, it would come out in a negative way. Yeah. Come out violently and angry. He'd do drugs because he's like, man, I'm just put up my nose. Let me escape this bullshit I got to deal with. That's the mentality 
crazy. Now, when you think about the story like that and what African American wrestlers had to deal with back then, and you go all the way to Kofi Kingston winning the WWE Championship, it's like, yes, times have changed, but man, what a journey to get there. Now, do you see why it, it, it affected me and MVP in that way? Why we cried about it? Because there's been so many times in my career, so many times in my career, I can speak of that I was like, this is some bullshit. Yeah. There were so many times in Mark Henry's career, MVP's career, Shelton's career, every black wrestler you see on TV has had to do some bullshit in order to continue to have their dream. Yeah. One or two people in creative said, I know black people. This is what they do. I know black people. They'll relate to this. Hey, chat, when you're going out there tonight, smile more. I'm not smiling. People know me enough. I'm a happy person. Yeah. I'm a smiling person. I don't walk around. Like what we're trying to get with Apollo Crews these days. See what I'm saying, man? That's, yeah. 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 But it's just. Funny. Xavier Woods, first time at Xavier Woods, right? First time at Xavier Woods. First time. Uh, we're in Atlanta. We're driving to our hotel, and a bunch of people are walking across the street in costumes, right? Yeah. One of you walk by, and they're on cosplay. And I see uh, Apollo, which was his name by the time, right? Yeah. He's walking across the street in his gimmick stuff. And I go, oh. Consequences Creed, but he dressed like Apollo Creed from Rocky. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, Yo, Creed. He was like, Prime time? And we're like, Yo, what up? Yo, how you doing? This is our first time meeting. And he's just a genuinely happy guy. He's a gen- he's a genuine wrestling fan. He's a genuine video game fan. He's a genuine anime fan. He's just a genuine guy. That's him all the time. I am not like that all the time. I don't talk to people about anime all the time. You know why? I don't want you in my business. Yeah. So if, if I'm around people who are in anime culture, I'll talk to them about it. But I don't talk to the boys about anime. Why? I want you to know, I want you to know about so don't talk to me about Goku. You don't know shit about Goku. <laughs> me and Helm talk about comics. You know what I'm saying? But I don't talk to nobody else about comics. But yeah. Xavier is genuinely what you see on TV. That's Xavier. That's Big E. That's yeah. they're not man. To, when people are like, oh man, man, you see, you see, you see what the dude, still do the do the TV. Go well, yeah. Oh man, they Uncle Tommy. No, they're having fun. Man, they were. Yeah. Before his, like, yeah, John Cena's come out and talk. Do you do build those in their foreheads? Yeah, John Cena used to come out and have kids going five knuckle shuffle. Yeah, what is a five knuckle? <laughs> it's an inside joke, and you motherfuckers are just sitting there going, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a five knuckle. What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, I just, I really want to bring that up. I remember, I obviously, we talked, but, like, I remember seeing that video of you and MVP, and I'm like, I'm like, there's a lot to unload there, and I talked to Emilio, and I'm like, we never properly talked about Kofi Mania and what it meant, what it meant to have a first African-American WWE champion, why that was such an issue. So I'm really grateful we got to do this now. And it it's, meant a lot, man. It meant a lot to a lot of people. Uh, I remember... I remember three years before, four years before it happened, I I put a post up. Yeah. Twitter and I said, hey, if Kofi, if you, people could Google it, I said, uh, if Kofi Kingston isn't WWE World Heavyweight Champion within the next five to ten years, then you know professional wrestling is fucking racist and shit. And yeah. It's bullshit. I was like, I saw, he had a Kofi had a match against somebody, and it was he, it was just amazing. He was just on point everything he did, like like. As a, as a professional, not even as a friend, as a professional, I was like, man, that, that was just awesome. And I remember I got a huge bunch of flack from people, and they were like, oh, that's racist. And I was like, no, it's not. It's honest truth, man. Kofi deserved, he, I, I, I don't feel like I deserved, I didn't deserve yeah. to be a world champion. Like WWE champion, WWE, I didn't deserve it. It was going to be given to me because of my size. Because of my my speaking ability, because of my looks, you know what I'm saying? I had all the things that Vince liked that he'd give a belt to somebody with. I didn't deserve it. I yeah. Indies, 
I didn't. I, I mean, go to OVW. Yeah, it was hard, but man, see what some guys are going through in the Indies. It's even harder, you know. And I don't want to compare oranges to apples on how you got to the company. You know what I'm saying? But I know for a fact that it wouldn't have been as sweet for me to win it or MVP to win it. Yeah, it would be for Kofi. That seemed like the sentiment. I met Kofi once, and that was at that Wally Mania. I was really briefly, and he was cool. But anybody that I've talked to that actually knows Kofi yeah. will tell you it couldn't have happened to a, a nicer and better guy who's, nicer, who's earned this. Like, he earned that opportunity. Hard-working guy. Yeah, man. And yeah, it, 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 was, it was really something that he deserved. Um, let's let's move on a little bit. Let's we got we do have questions here. One of them is what would make what would make a top tier heel shad? You can restart your live stream because my phone died. I already did. As soon as your phone died, let's get my phone. Oh, so you're on it. Sweet. But we have a question here from my boy uh, Vinitude Art. What would what would make a top tier heel shad? You know, like someone that when their music hits, you know stuff is about to get real. I always thought Triple H had that main event feel, but you know, there aren't those many top tier heels like the moment their music hits. Like, what makes a top tier heel to you? Because I, if, if you ask me, I think, like, realistically, like, Baron Corbin's a top tier heel because the moment his music hits, I'm yeah. like, oh, I hate this guy. Baron, <laughs> you know? I, think, I think what makes a top tier heel is investment. Yeah. Top tier, a top tier heel usually is a guy that was a top tier baby face. Yeah. People don't get that. You have to want somebody to be good so bad that when they're bad, you're just like, fuck, I hate this asshole. Yeah. Okay, and in my opinion, the one of the best heels I've ever seen in my lifetime. Uh, I, I want to say Hulk Hogan is my favorite heel. Yeah, I want to yeah. say I want to say I, I want to say Hulk Hogan is my favorite heel, and he's not my favorite baby face. He's Same not, here. Yeah. I was never a, a red and yellow Hogan guy, but I loved yeah, I Hollywood. Yeah, but he's my he's my favorite heel as far as making a crowd just fucking hate you or love you because they because they're doing the nwo era that yeah. was that was the best and then um randy is just so perfect in everything he does like randy orton to me is the pinnacle he is he is the pinnacle of pro the, the thing fans don't understand what randy is is they put him with guys and make him look small <laughs> yeah. So he never gets credit for being a big guy, but he's a big guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It matches with guys who are athletic, so he never gets credit for being a high flyer because you're putting it in with fucking Ray and everybody else. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But Randy is the perfect prototype to what a pro wrestler in WWE in WWE is. Okay, he's not a corporate guy. He tells everybody to fuck off 90% of the time, all right? He loves the boys and will look out for you if you are looking out for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He is the quintessential perfect wrestler, you know? Athletic, strong, can change it up on a dime, great timing, amazing timing, okay? Can chain wrestle, can do amazing matches with anybody, okay? I think, in my, in my opinion, Randy Orton is the, is, is the best heel ever. How great was it when they revisited the Randy Kofi thing with the whole stupid, stupid oh damn Kofi God. mania? Well, like where, where Kofi messed up a spot and Randy got actually pissed in the ring and was like, yeah. stupid, stupid. And then finally when we we're going through Kofi mania, they're like, okay, let's have Randy and Kofi at it again. Yeah. And then now, now you had Kofi being like, stupid, stupid, throwing it back at him like 10 years later. And I was like... And you know that, like you were just saying, like for people that don't know, because I always got the perception, like Randy seems like one of the guys that isn't so corporate, but he is with the boys. So like, he was like down with that. He probably would love that callback just as much as Kofi loved that callback. He loved it. But that's the thing is like, I always feel like fans don't understand our business. I think fans think they understand. Yeah. They don't realize how much we love each other, you know, in adversity. And Randy, yeah. Randy's one of those guys... Man, like, I love going to Iraq and Afghanistan. I love doing the troops for the troops. I'm, I love the military. You yeah. Know? I have a bunch, of, a bunch of my boys in the military. Uh, I love soldiers. But I just remember going over there, and Randy was like, I went AWOL to not come over here. 
<laughs> and then like I read it all the best signing, and they were like, Hey Orion, you fucking went AWOL, you piece of shit. He goes, Yeah, and I made more money than all you motherfuckers combined. <laughs> and it's like <laughs> And we're like, we're like, and then we're like, Vince is like, ha ha ha. And like, he literally brought him just because he knew he was going to hate it. He was like, I know you're going to hate this. So you have to come. And he was like, motherfucker. That's so <laughs> funny. So speaking of Randy Orton, there's one more thing I do want to ask you, because now that you bring up Randy Orton, this past week on Raw, yeah, um, they had a, an Edge and Randy Orton segment again. Personally, two of my favorite of all time from my teenage years, Randy Orton and Edge. Big fan of both guys. Um, they had that last man standing match at WrestleMania. Now going into Monday Night Raw, yeah, and going into Monday Night Raw, uh, we found out that Randy Orton now challenged Edge to a wrestling match uh, at, at Backlash. It ended really oddly with Carly, Charlie Charlie Caruso going, and it's gonna be the greatest wrestling match. This could be the greatest wrestling match of all time. It was really weird. I don't know if you saw the highlight of that, but it was such a weird thing. What I want to ask you from that, though, <laughs> so cringy, but what I want to ask you from all of that is um, there's obviously been that stigma for years, even when you were in the company, that Vince doesn't want to be looked at as like the old pro wrestling company. Pro wrestling is what his dad did. He doesn't do wrestling. He does sports entertainment. And for years, there was a lot, there was a lot of avoidance of using the word wrestling and calling someone a wrestler. We've seen even The Undertaker hesitate to use the word wrestler when he's talking about something about yeah. himself because there's you know they've been he's been trained to like not say wrestler say entertainer yeah. or a uh, superstar yeah why do you think they're okay with using wrestling right now is it in terms of that storyline specifically or do you think they're loosening up on the wrestling thing you know, why was that a thing with Vince? you know what it is man the things that the old man wants to get he, he'll, he'll be aggressive about the things he doesn't want to be aggressive he'll be passive about and as yeah. time goes on he'll just be like all right so we're gonna change it up you can say wrestler you want you can say this all you want don't care it's, but wh why did he? Why was he so against wrestling and wrestler? Like I even think, while you were there, I think because the stigma was that uh, Ted Turner puts on wrestling. That's yeah, thing. we're New York. We put on wrestling. We're entertainment. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I got a. I I, I used to have a Ford Explorer. I love my Ford Explorer. I love my Ford Explorer. Yeah. You know saying uh, if I could, I would just drive a Toyota pickup truck every fucking day. Be all right. Yeah. <laughs> or a Ford pickup truck. Yeah. Be all right every day. I have a Mercedes Benz uh, GLE 350. Do I like it? Hell yeah, I like it. But if I could, I would just, you know, drive a pickup truck. You know, it's a perception when I'm in the GLE than when I'm in the Ford. When I'm in the Ford, people are like, oh, you're not doing that well. I'm like, no, I'm doing really good in my life. I'm, I'm, I'm very successful. They're like, oh, well, your car. Hmm. Okay, then they see me in the GLE and they're like, "Oh, did you get a raise or something like that?" I'm like, "I don't work for anybody." I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Get a raise? It's it's a, it's a perception of the way people see things. You know what I'm saying? I have a friend of mine. He has a two hundred fifty thousand dollar watch, right? Yeah. That he hates. He hates it, but he wears it. Why? Because when he goes to a meeting, people know he has their house on his wrist. Yeah. If you have your house on their wrist. That's perception. WWE, we're two hundred fifty thousand dollars watches. WWE, yeah, they're hobos and hillbillies, and they put that perception out there so much that it translated from the rest of the country to if you like wrestling, you're slack jawed yokel drinking out moonshine. But when in the actuality, I've met so many celebrities and stars and people who are in the industry that are like, oh my god, I've been watching WWE since I was a kid. I've been watching WWF since I was a kid. You know, I meet more movie, more people in the entertainment business that are wrestling fans than anywhere else. You know, but the yeah. same wrestling was given because of it, saying that that's wrestling and this is this is sports entertainment. It kind of lingers, and people still think of wrestlers as stupid or dumb, or wrestling fans as uh, retarded and stuff like that. No, for sure. Have you have you ever seen anyone? Have you ever seen anyone get in trouble for using the word wrestler? Uh, no. All right. Because you know, you know what it was? I know that I never told people, I never told people I was a wrestler. Bobby Lashley used to tell people he's a wrestler. And I used to say I'm a sports entertainer. I, I'm, a, I'm a WWE superstar. And that's it. Yeah. And, proud, and I, this thing is I was proud to say that. Yeah. Because if I said, because, because I remember one time, I actually do remember this. 
I remember one time uh, I went to the bank and the lady was like, oh, so what do you do? I was like, oh, I'm a wrestler. She's like, oh, my cousin is a wrestler. I was like, oh, really? What's his name? And she gave me some weird name. And I was like, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know him. She's like, yeah, he's been doing independence for about for about 14 years now. How about you? What independent do you work for? And I was like, oh, um, I wrestled for WWE. Yeah. You're like a star. There's a difference there, yeah. I was like, huh? She's like, and she looked at my check, and she saw a WWE World Wrestling Entertainment. She's like, you're a WWE. She, her entire demeanor changed. I was like, you know what? There is something to this being a star thing. Yeah, own being it. Star. Being a superstar is more impressive than being a wrestler. That's fair. Do you watch any NXT? I have not then. Someone has a question of what your thoughts are on the Undisputed Era. Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish. I have done. I no? Mean, yo, man, I, 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 I've, I've seen those guys all the time. I've seen those guys on TV. Uh, I know I've met them, but it, it's, it's one of those things where, like, I didn't really get to interact with them. Yeah, like, like I'm a big guy, and when people are like are like, oh, yo, I wrestle. I'm like, oh, wait, that's great, and I'll talk to you on a one on one. But it, I don't really have a lot to tell little like small guys in the business. I don't know your journey. Yeah, like, bigger guy. It's usually I'm in a better connection. Like me and uh, Cross, Killer Cross. You know, that's my dog, Killer Cross. Yeah. Uh, uh, the first time I met him, I was doing stunt coordinating for a movie with Terry Crews and for the wrestling scene. And I was also playing Terry's brother. And Cross came on as one of the wrestlers. And they were they they they, were, they, they gave a bunch of guys. And I saw him. And I was like, oh, that guy looks incredible. Let's use him. And this guy, this guy. And so I made sure to pick the guys that I wanted to use. And Cross, one of the guys, he actually drove down from where he lived to do the spot for the wrestling movie. That's sweet. And we were talking, and I was like, bro, you're gonna get a contract. And he was like, oh man, that's kind of cool. He just told me that I off the rip. I was like, dude. Everything the company is looking for. These are the things you need to focus on: personality, cutting promos, doing this, A Y Z. And we just had a great conversation while we were on set. And then a little time goes by, and I saw him at an indie show. A little time goes by, I saw him at another show, and we're just seeing each other. And at this time, his career is blowing up. But I'm not really looking into wrestling like that. I'm still I'm focused on acting. But I see things because he's on my Instagram, and so I just liking all his posts and just being motivated. To yeah, a, a guy I met and a friend I met, and then. I remember we were somewhere and he was like, remember the advice you gave me? I was like, yeah. He's like, that shit stuck with me, bro. He goes, I've really been trying hard on this, this, and this, and this. And I was like, oh man, that's all great. And he's like, yeah, I think we get a contract here. And this. I was like, okay, cool. That's it. And we kept on moving. But Adam Cole and those guys, like I saw them and I'm, I've, I've met them, but it was like, man, I don't know what to say to you guys. Yeah, no, that's fair. And Killer Cross, he's killing it, man. He's on NXT now. He's carrying Cross. He came up with Scarlet to make a terrific package. The entrance is insane. Um, I don't. I've been a fan of him for a while too, man. He's a he's a, he's got the look and like he's got the character down, man. He's seems he scary. Said, he's had to go through some hurdles and obstacles that he overcame, and yeah, man, I'm I'm super happy for him, man. You know, he's the breadwinner right now. Yeah. You know, How? Like, yeah, like 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 he like like. He can legitimately be the breadwinner right now. For yeah. Him, his life, for his family, and things that he needs to take care of because, man, he's a good guy, loves his mom, loves his family, loves his dad, loves his family. And we're going through some hard times right now. Like, people don't realize, man, you'll see a guy on TV yelling and screaming, being a badass. They got fucking big hearts, man. Seriously. No, and I could tell, man, sometimes the social media is very inspirational. He's sharing some quotes yeah, and stuff. I'm like, I'm like this guy. This guy's a, this guy's a little more than what we perceive him as as a character. And um, yeah. don't get me wrong, I don't. I'm not gonna say I have like a, a like it's not like how me and you were cool, but like he has followed me for a lot of times and we have talked. And he's always been so genuine and just like yeah. a good dude, you know. Um, and uh, I think I think I'm glad I didn't know that you you had a relationship with Killer Cross. So that was a cool cool yeah. story there. Yeah. It's, it's always weird to me because like some fans they always like. I remember uh, oh so the, the guy what's called uh, if you guys aren't following him. WTF GFX. Dude, his graphics he's been doing, these evolution wow. graphics. Okay. I didn't know we're gonna wow. shout him out on here, but he's been killing it. Yo, those evolution graphics are the shit. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. You see, you know what I mean? I like mines. Yeah. So I would have used, but guess what? I didn't do the graphics. <laughs> yeah. So I like it. All right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people have been requesting them from him. I'm like, dude, you're getting more hype because he like, you know, I'm kind of like 
uh, in the in the not to pop myself, I'm kind of like the OG of the Instagram wrestling community. So people, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the John Cena. That like everyone just kind of hits me up about things. Like, yo, like how do you do this? Or what do you think about that? And da da da. So he hit me up and he's like. He's asked me about what I thought about these graphics. If you should keep doing them, and like we've been talking back and forth. He's like, "Yo, people keep requesting them." Then they're getting mad at me about the pictures I use, so I have to redo them. <laughs> he sent me. You know what's funny? He sent me a message uh, the other day. We were talking. I was like, I was like, because I messaged him back. I was like, "Hey, Mel, so much. Thank you. Appreciate you doing that. You know, saying thanks so much." He was like, "Yo, man. In all honesty, you're probably one of the nice guys inside, man. <laughs> There's a lot of guys who are just like, who are like, oh, I'd use that photo. Yeah. I'm like." Yeah, man. I, I, I've met a lot of guys who aren't fan friendly. I'm not yeah. guys. Uh, I'm people friendly when people are good people. If you're an asshole, I'm not going to like you. That's it. You know what I'm saying? But if you're not following them, WTF uh, GFX, follow them. Uh, it's awesome. It's funny yeah. because uh, he did a he did a, like he, he did my, me and JTGs before Shelton. Yeah. <laughs> and so we teased Shelton about it, right? And so we always have a joke with Shelton because Shelton's very dark skin, you know. What yeah. I'm saying? And so we you know. Remember the old Dave Chappelle, you know, with Rick James or Eddie Murphy and Charlie Murphy. He was like dark skin motherfuckers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I put a joke under Shelton's photo, just playing around with him. And Shelton saw it and he laughed. He was like, "All right, whatever." And some fan is like, "Oh, that's not proper to talk to people like that in today's society." I was like, "Yo, look at here, motherfucker! Shut the fuck up." I <laughs> I was like, you black son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. I think sometimes people on social media underestimate that, you know, people have inside jokes and relationships with each other. There's a lot to joke with each other. It's just ridiculous. Um, but no, he's killing it, man. I'm going to go check him out. Those evolution photos, like he started doing them. It was yeah. funny because then one day he started posting a bunch of his old work that he was doing before that in his stories. And I messaged him like, you're, you're doing this to remind people that you can do other things. Right? He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do other things. Like he's doing other things. Like you guys can request other things in these evolution photos. Like he's he's talented, dude, man. The evolution photos are gonna are gonna blow up so much for him. Yeah. Because uh, I think I think he got like twenty thousand followers in like a week or two. Yeah, and I've been trying to help out, man. Like I'm like I have like you know I knew you were probably gonna see it, but like I was sending it to Brett and his wife so like they could see, and then got they got Brett Hart to repost it, and then he yeah. somehow sent it to someone that knew Randy Orton and. Uh, someone that knew Randy Orton sent it to Randy Orton's wife, so then she reposted. Like everyone's kind of yeah, like, I, 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 I tagged just him on it, man, because you know it's like when you see, like, you don't think of your career, man, but like when you see your career, like I, I do mine every year for myself, or like my birthday. I look, I look at like where I came from. And I'm yeah, like, cool. I, I still look good. <laughs> Look good. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> but I think, and I, and I kind of went on a rant a little bit on my on my story yesterday because I, I I do say like with a lot of these editors and stuff because I guess someone reposted his AJ Styles one, but they scratched out his name. So then when AJ Styles reposted it, he didn't get any credit. And I know it wasn't AJ Styles. AJ Styles probably found it somewhere else, saw it, and then saved it. Or maybe it was AJ Styles. I don't know. But like, well, you know what it is, you know what it is man. It's it's man. You gotta love our fans. Yeah. yeah. Like 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 wrestling fans will stick will stick around. You know, say I'm a Knicks fan. I haven't watched yeah. the game since fucking two thousand and one. I ain't gonna lie to you. All right. But yeah. it's infuriating to watch a Knicks game. Okay. Yeah. It's infuriating as a Knicks fan to watch a Knicks game. All right. I can't watch. I've watched two thousand one. Wrestling fans, they will sit there and watch a bad product and go, Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. Come on, WWE, get your shit together. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, Randy Orton and Edge, come on. Get your shit together. <laughs> I think that's what so happy with Mania. Because it was one of those moments where you're like, yes, they got, oh, okay, it's good. It was actually really good. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just a Mania that was a phoned in Mania. They were like, oh, yeah. this is actually good. I can talk about this with people and we can have, we can talk about this. It was good. You know what yeah. I'm saying? The wrestling fans are diehard. They want to stick around. You know what I'm saying? So that's true. Right, Two so more questions. First right. one. Hey, AW. Go ahead, go ahead. All, hey, yeah. Said, Let's go to 125. Or yeah. Because we were we're pretty good. Let me move this yeah. closer. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, one another question I have for you. AW. Uh, Double or nothing's coming up next Saturday. Uh, Cody Rhodes is facing Lance Arch Archer for the new TNT Championship. And they're bringing in Mike Tyson to yeah. present to the winner. Um, how do you feel about that? And second, I know you were there during the whole guest host era of Monday Night Raw. Um, did you ever get to meet Mike Tyson? Do you have any experiences with Mike Tyson? Any Mike Tyson I stories? I Mike Tyson. Oh, yeah. 
yeah, I forgot about that. How do you feel about that? How is Mike Tyson's love for wrestling? Give us some inside scoop on Mike Tyson. Oh, man. No, you know, hey, oh, I got a shout out from Poland. My boy, my boy from Poland said, give me a shout out real quick. Really? <laughs> no, he's the bodyguard, Mike Tyson. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, no, um, yeah, it's kind of weird. When I was like around 22, 23, I was already with WWE. Yeah. Um, uh, I would leave Louisville on like a week job or two weeks jobs and go and bodyguard for a while and come back. Right. And when I was in OVW, Cornette found out that I was always bodyguard for Mike Tyson. And so he was like, we're going to hype that up and promote that. And he was yeah. Like, so they were like, okay, well, this is Mike Tyson's former bodyguard. And he's now with, Carly, with Carl, Carlos Colon Jr., you know, Carlito. And so it's like they paid big bucks to have Shaq Gaspard move to Louisville to bodyguard Carlito now that he's in Bowling Services. And I was like, all right, whatever. <laughs> but I would leave Louisville, go bodyguard Mike, and come back. And then Mike had to have Mike had a fight in Louisville, Kentucky. And so when Mike had to fight in Kentucky, I don't really talk to Mike. I, like, I was never like, hey, Mike, hey, I, I'm very, yeah. I was working as a bodyguard. I was very quiet, just kept my mouth shut, just like did my job and just like, you know, never, never interact with the VIP. You know what I'm saying? And so then Mike found out I was, oh, he's, he's, he found out when we came to Louisville that I was wrestling and he was ecstatic. Like he didn't even care about his fight. He was like, yeah. hey, out here, oh man, that's gonna be cool. Da, 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 da. And so we talked about it for a while. And you know, Shelly, uh, who's his uh, promoter, uh, just never liked me. He was like, you're, he's like, you're a big, three hundred plus pound thug, and I was. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying like, you saw me, and I was not the right look that he wanted around Mike. So that was so Louisville was gonna be my last job with Mike, and I was like, fuck it. I went to his guys. I got tickets for everybody in OVW. Put them in the bleachers. Mike has a fight. He wins in like the second or third round. You know what I'm saying? Easy, easy money. And that was it. And then I got, then a few years go by, I go to WWE. And now I'm on TV. And so now I'm doing good. Me and Jay are getting over. We're doing things with Shaq, everybody like that. We're getting guest hosting. When we didn't think with Shaq, a lot of guys got pissed off. Why? We got super over with Shaq. Yeah. Like we got super over in celebrity circles with Shaq. Like every time a celebrity came in, like Akon, he was like crime time, you know, uh, 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 DMX, all those guys. Whenever somebody came backstage, TLC, they were like crime time, crime time, crime. Time. We're like the we're like the it group. So here comes Mike Tyson coming on board, right? And somebody in creative who knew I bodyguarded Mike Tyson because it was in one of my packets for my like uh, gimmicks. Yeah, like, they knew I bodyguarded Mike Tyson, and they were like. Oh, we're gonna bring Crime Time in, and they were like, "Well, you know, Crime Time's got enough already." <laughs> and they were like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." But Chad used to bodyguard Mike Tyson. Let's bring Chad in, right, and have a thing where they can talk about it. And they and they and they run the ideas. And I I know the person, the creative. All right, it wasn't Brian, it wasn't Ed Kosky. All right, but the person was like. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I don't see why Crime Time needs to get even more over with that kind of stuff. Da, 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 da. And they just shit it on me. And yeah. so uh, they, they pretty much told Vince, like, we don't need, they don't need to bring me on. So they bring me on for TV. And I was like, okay, cool. No problem. Yeah. They, they didn't bring it to TV. And it was like we, were, like, we were literally driving to TV. Yeah. And then told, hey, guys, go to the next town. So we had to drive through the TV town that we already had booked a hotel. Stay there, wake up, not go to Monday Night Raw, and drive to the next town. And I couldn't. And they, they were like, "Just keep it apart. We don't want it." That's so why. I, it's just it's the, bull, it's the bullshit. It's just the bullshit. And then so like, uh, awesome. like 2013, 2014, uh, I'm working out at Gold's Gym. Yeah, I go I go like four in the morning, five in the morning, and one morning I didn't go. I didn't go early with Michael Hearn. I went later in the day and they were like, hey, Mike Tyson was here. And I was like, oh, Mike? I was like, oh, that's great. And so they were like, yeah, yeah, you should, you, should, you should say hi. And his trainer is my boy, Frankie, who's a great boxing trainer. And so he was like, come through. And so I came through the next morning and Mike wasn't there. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to go back to my regular schedule and just come back in the morning time at 5 a.m. Yeah. I don't, I'm like worried about seeing Mike. And so I'm in there and I'm on the cardio, just doing my cardio. And then I see Mike and he's like, I know you. I forgot your name, but I know you. And he slapped me in the back and then kept on walking. And I was like, 
Is that Mike? <laughs> yeah. So, and so I went over. And so, I, and so like after like I went over, I went over to Frankie's room on the side. Frankie and Tr, two amazing trainers at Gold's Gym. I went into their room on the side, and Mike was in there, and he's stretching them out. I was like, Mike, it's me, it's Beast, and he was like, Beast, Beast, Beast. Man, I know a lot of Beast, man. I go. Beast from Kentucky. I was in Louisville trying to be a wrestler. Yo, man, what's up? How'd that work out for you? <laughs> and I was like, I did good. <laughs> I was crying time. He was like, you were crying time? Oh, man, get out of here. You were no crying time. I was like, Mike, that was me. I was crime time. He was like, you were crime time? I didn't even know that was you, man. I didn't even know that was you, man. Oh, man, this whole time, crime time was my bodyguard. <laughs> And I was like, that's awesome, Mike. I was like, that's awesome, Mike. He's like, you want to take a photo real quick? I was like, yes, Mike, let's take a photo real quick. And we took a photo, like. <laughs> you should have the picture? Uh, yeah, we took a photo. You got to post it. After the story, you got to post the picture, <laughs> man. That's the people need to see. That's so cool because you know what, man? That's that's a bummer that, you know, the WWE did you dirty like that and then let you meet him when he was guest hosted. It was, it was, you know what it was, <laughs> man? It was one of those things where uh, before I was a wrestler, I already had my life. Yeah, wrestling like wrestling didn't make me shad motherfucking gas bars. Yeah, <laughs> I was this way before I became a pro wrestler. Like everybody who knew me, they're like, you know, I'm just this guy. This is just the way I am. I'm outgoing. I do what I want to do. I've never had a job. I've never had a job. I've never yeah. had a nine to five job in my life. All right, for like more than two weeks because I just was like, all right, this is not working out. I can't do this shit. I've been a bouncer, bodyguard, fighter, wrestler. Actor. That's what I do. Producing, investing in companies. You know, um, I remember I told a story the other day to my boy. I was like, I gave, I told one of my friends back in 2005, 2006, uh, 2004. I was like, he was like, yo, man, what do you do for money? I was like, yo, man, every time I get $30 that I don't know what to do with, uh, I have a friend of mine and he invests in stocks for me. Yeah. He's like, $30? What the fuck is that going to do for you? And so he started doing it too. And in 2016, he looked at the money that he, he 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 completely forgot about all the money he was giving my boy, and he was like, "Hey man, by the way, how, how's my how's my bullshit stocks doing? My dollar, my my my, my thirty dollar stocks." Yeah. Like, oh, you got. Uh, I mean, the value overall is about I don't know forty to fifty thousand dollars. He was like, "What? What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, "He because he just doesn't understand how stocks work, yeah, and how investments work. All he knew was to work hard and get a paycheck." I never was taught that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and for a lot of guys in WWE that I've met throughout my career, like from indies and everything like that, that's their same way too. They only know how to work hard and collect a paycheck. And that's why when they leave wrestling, they immediately go back into the workforce. You know what I'm saying? I left wrestling. I haven't been back into the workforce. That's actually a good segue to what I want to ask you next because there is someone who is saying that he may never wrestle again, which I highly doubt because he's young as hell and he's probably is going to wrestle again and wrestling yeah. opening up. But he is a creative person that went from wrestling and is now pursuing his career in music, and that's Leo Rush. Do you have any relationship with Leo Rush? What do you think about Leo Rush? And I love Leo Rush. I actually, yeah. uh, man, can I find it? I remember I put a, a, a I sent him a message and, and on, on Twitter, and I said, man, don't do that. I said, right now you're. I said, I said something to the effect of, right now you're down and you're you're down because you work for a company that made you feel that way because the dream became a reality and the reality is not what the dream is. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I said, fuck, I can't. If I, if I, it was a few days ago. I don't know if it's on my Twitter still. So it's, it's on my Twitter somewhere. But you saw that, like where he says he's never gonna wrestle again. Yeah. You know, might have just been the case because wrestling's closed. But I I I I, I, ba I, ba I basically told him. That um, because Leo Rush is not talented. He he's not talented. God didn't give him a gift. Okay, he was born to an average family, from an average background, with an average income. Okay, everything Leo Rush has, he earned. Yeah, everything Leo Rush has, he earned. He wasn't born six foot five. Okay, he wasn't born muscular and could put on muscle real fast. OK, he was born in the worst circumstance to become a pro wrestler and he earned that shit. Don't let people dishearten you from what you earned. And that's what he's doing right now. 
you know? Don't yeah. let it Because all you're doing is letting them win and proving them right. Too talented, too special to walk away like that. Seriously. He's yeah, too- that's why I highly doubt him. Like, he's too good, and, and he's still way too young to just never heart. wrestle again. His heart has been broken. Every, yeah. every, yo, I remember I was 19 years old. Okay. My first time, first time I ever got my heart broken. All right. I was playing college basketball. I met a girl, E.C. Khadija Reed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I met a girl. All right. And we started dating. Uh, I left from playing college ball and selling drugs at college. <laughs> and I went and I moved in with her. And then we were going to, like, she had a baby that wasn't mine because she was pregnant when we met. And we were going to be together. And I was like, this is it. I'm 19 years old. I'm going to get a nine to five. I got a job as a mechanic at a Firestone gas station, uh, Firestone tire place. And I liked it because I was stacking tires. And that was like my cardio and my, my workout. Because when you're a fighter, you're taught, get a job, get a labor job so that when you're working, you're basically training. And then, because I was trying to get ready for fights. That's why I got a job at Firestone Tire. Because I was like, I'm going to basically stack these tires and work out and then knock them all down and be like, got to do it again and stack them up and get stronger. And it worked because I was trying to prep for fights. And I remember she said she had to stay late at work one time and she slept with another guy. I find out she cheated on me with another guy. And my heart was broken. And then we broke up and we had this apartment in, in, our, in both our names. She took her name off the apartment. I'm left with this debt at 19 years old. Yeah. I remember, I'm at my mom's house and I'm crying. I'm like, oh, mom, I never had my heart broken this way. This yeah. way. And women are bad. <laughs> I've been there. I've been yeah. there. Yeah. My mom was like, yo, shut the fuck up. Stop being a little bitch. <laughs> yeah. Cry now. And when you're done crying, get over it. Show her who the fuck you are. Show the world who you are. And keep moving forward. And after like about a few days of crying, I left my mom's house, went to my empty apartment, and I bought a bench. I bought a bar. I bought some weights. And I had a TV and a phone. And I had a mattress in the back room. I had no uh, hot water in that apartment. And I stayed in that apartment for a year. Yeah. Bench pressing, training. That's it. I would run in the morning time. I would go bounce at nightclubs like Jazzy T's. Uh, the, be- the the bounce nightclub on Bankhead Highway back in the day was the roughest club in Atlanta. I used to bounce at the bank. Uh, the, uh, the bou- I, used to, I used to bounce at the, uh, the bounce nightclub on Bankhead. That's how I met T.I. That's how I met all these guys that know me now. You know, you said Bankhead, and I didn't know where that was, but I just remember really liking that song by T.I. called Bankhead, that beat. I'm like, dan, yeah. dan, 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 dan. I was one of the bouncers there back yeah. then. And, then. and you know what? I used to go every night. I would come home to an empty apartment with a bench and some dumbbells, and I would just sit there just training all day, working out all day, because I remember I had a, count, a, a camp counselor who, whose brother – was this really notorious criminal in New York? Yeah, like, like yo, my brother, his, like he, like he was doing like thirty years in Rikers, and I remember when they when they finally got him, he took down like a bunch of cops. And he's like, yo, my brother just sat in the apartment and just trained, and that's how he got like that. And I was like, he was a beast. And I yeah, was like, that's what I want to be. I want to be a beast like that. And my nickname was already Beast, so I was like, all right, it's time to go, it's time to be, become the beast. And I was, and then like in a year of me just training. I was like, I'm gonna be in WWE. I'm gonna be in WWE. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do it. I was on tough enough. Like a year training, then I'm on tough enough. Then I'm off tough enough. Then I flew to Thailand and I'm having fights in Thailand and Holland, right? And I come back to the United States and WWE is like, hey, we want you to wrestle for us. K1 is like, hey, we want you to fight for us. And prior to all all that stuff, I just blew up. I got my heart broken. But if I did get my heart broken, if she didn't break my heart, I'd have been some bum. Just working yeah. at the gas station, or maybe not even maybe having one or two fights in Thailand. I remember, I remember, I met, I met Dana White before I went to my WWE tryout. Charles Mask, right? Charles Mask from uh, 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 what's the company? Tap Out, right? Yeah. Charles Mask was like my biggest supporter in MMA. He was like, "Yo, you're gonna be a." He's like, "You're only 21. You're only 21. Look at you. Come on, yeah. man. Fuck WWE." 
come fucking fight. Come on, you're good. And I was like, nah, I don't know. He's like, I want you to meet Dana White. And he took me to meet Dana White. And I remember I told Dana White this. I said, Charles wrote me by. And he goes, Dana, this is Shad Gaspard. And Dana goes, hey, I walked by. And I was like, okay. I met Vince. Vince went and shook my hand hard. And looked at my dad and said, this is a specimen of the kid you have here. And I remember my, my initial thought was, I trust this guy more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But even when I got in WWE, I never let people's feelings, negative output of me, break me down how I felt about wrestling. What Leo's doing right now, he's allowing all that negativity that they have for him, that they had for him, all the bullshit they put him through, to affect him. You know what I'm saying? And take away from his dream that he earned. Kill that, dead dad. Yeah. Because I'm like, even if he wants to pursue music right now, do other creative, I'm like, you can't. He's not done with wrestling. It's not over. You're not. You don't have. You don't. You don't. You do not have to be one dimensional. I'm an actor. I'm a writer. I have yeah. a book. Okay. I have graphic. I have, I have. I have. I have two graphic novels out. I just wrote a cartoon. We just finished doing the animation for the for the for the presentation of the cartoon. Okay. By the way, Mike Tyson might be on board for the animation. My boy Greg Sipes, who's Beast Boy. Yeah. Okay. He's partnering with me. Like one of the guys who created Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is partnering with me. Seriously, all the guys I looked up to when I was a kid, I've met. I'm part of that app. Don't don't let go of something you want to do, okay? Because some other somebody made you feel bad about it. If you've given this much to wrestling, and now you're gonna let it go. And that means you're the failure, not wrestling. I tell guys that all the time. I see guys come in and out, and they'd be like, yo, man, I'm done with this. They won't give me a push. What do you mean they won't give you a push? Take the push. Yeah. Well, you know, it's all politics. Yes. Yes. Everything is politics. If you want a nine-to-five job, go work at McDonald's. You get no politics. Oh, wait. Yeah, there are politics because you got a manager and you got somebody who wants to work the fries and somebody who wants to work the burgers. There are politics there too. They're just on a lower level. Here, at least you get rewarded bigger. Yeah. Come on. Leo's amazing, man. I remember the first time when I met him, first time I saw him wrestle, I think it was here in California. And I remember he was walking and he kept his head down and he tried to avoid me. And I went, Yo, man, what up, bro? You awesome. And he was like, <laughs> Yeah. He's not used to bigger guys complimenting him. Yeah, people are coming to me and like, Oh, hey, can I get your autograph? Yeah, sure, bro. Take a photo. Take a photo. Yeah, excuse me. Hey, man, I think you're amazing. I want to make money with you one day. That's my thought process. You're so good. I want to make money with you one day. I don't care where we do it at. In a bingo hall or in a fucking stadium. Yeah. I would love to make money with you one day. Because as a big guy, I need a guy like you. I need a guy people are going to cheer for. I want that. Yeah, dynamics the best sometimes too, you know? It's the best. The little guy trying to overcome the big dude. David versus Goliath, as the WWE would like to point out every single time. <laughs> David versus Goliath. It's not sound different. <laughs> But no, man. Yeah, I just wanted your thoughts on that too, because you know, uh, I actually had that story for last week, but we never got to. But I remember when he tweeted that out. I'm like, oh, I want to know if Shad's ever met Leo and what he thinks about that. Funny. I think somebody put out a post that he did. he says something to Mark Henry. I don't want to comment on that because I don't know about it yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I remember somebody somebody actually sent me a message about that, and they were like, Leo Rush said about Mark Henry. It's kind of like, it's kind. Of, you know what it is? I like I, I look at the ACA situation. I look at Leo Rush situation. Uh, Leo constructively went, 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 went about it his way. ACH negatively went about it his way. We talked about that and understand that. Um, for both brothers, for both brothers, I hope that people watching what they're going through understand that we have all gone through that, except that we didn't have the medium of social media to project that. Yeah. We use social media to project our feelings about each other. We used our cell phones to text each other and get a group messages and go, yo, I didn't like you said it about me. Why would you say that about me? You know what I'm saying? That's just the, that see, so like 
I do know that with this generation, it's a little different. They air their grievances out to the public. I love MVP. I love MVP. I love Hassan. That is my brother for life. We have not always got along. Yeah. Same thing for Jason. You know, same thing for Titus O'Neil. I love Titus O'Neil. We have not always got along. I respect the fuck out of Titus O'Neil. I respect the fuck out of him. Yeah. You would never ever hear me and Titus O'Neil back and forth in each other on social media because he's man enough to text me and go, hey man, this really hurt my feelings when you said this. And I go, shit, I didn't even know. I was just joking. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what he said about Mark. I don't know what Mark said about him. I can't comment on that. But what I can say is that as brothers, we're always willing to hear each other out. Yeah. Just make the phone call. Send a text. If ACH, if ACH had texted me or DM me tomorrow and said, hey, man, I, I want to talk to you. Can you send me your phone number? Boom. No hesitation. No hesitation. Yeah. That's just the way, that's, that's the way it should be. It's just, you know, I think social media sometimes gives people more trouble than they really need to be because when you put it out there, you're literally, literally letting everybody in and that sometimes it's not necessary. It's unnecessary, and then you you let the wrong elements in. Yeah, and you know everybody has an opinion now, and sometimes those some opinions just kind of stir the pot more than it really needs to be. You know, it's crazy. My boy, uh, one of my boys, uh, he hates this lockdown. That we're in. Well, I'm I'm in LA, by the way. Most people, yeah. in LA. I, live, I live I live in Los Angeles, and he hates the lockdown. <clears throat> and he's a white guy, cool as cool shit. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, bro, can't stand the lockdown. Going down, going downtown. Going to going to going to march. Going to protest. Yeah. All right, bro. Have fun. <laughs> you want to join us? I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is what I'd be doing anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm introvert. I'm, I'm I'm an extrovert. Okay, but I'm also an introvert. I'm the same way, so I get it. Yeah. I'm extrovert when I'm out, but yeah, I'm inside like reading my book, doing my statement. Yeah, and you gotta drag me up, but once I'm out, I get, you got it. <laughs> yeah. But he told me he went down to the rally downtown. And, like, and he's like, they're like, this is tyranny. Open the beach. And this guy comes up and he goes, and he's like, and he's like yeah, this is tyranny. And, and another one of our boys with him is like, yeah, this is tyranny. Open the beach. This is unconstitutional. Da, 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 da. And, they, and then they, 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 go, they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guy next to him goes, yeah, fuck giving these niggers and these spicks welfare checks. And he pulls out a Confederate flag. He's like, screw the niggers and them goddamn Mexican bastards. And he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and he jumped out of, and they're like, yo, what you doing, man? <laughs> and they pulled the flag and they're like, yo, man, get out of here. And then like he begrudgingly called me. He goes, yo, man, I gotta tell you, this is the funniest shit. <laughs> he goes, he goes, you're right. I don't know what you know, it's like, yeah, I understand. You have a right to say that yes, you don't feel that this is constitutional, that this is right. But as you're projecting your opinions and your thoughts and your genuine feelings, okay, of being imprisoned in your homes, there are also people who are going to slide their negative agenda into your genuine feelings and start projecting them with your voice. That's what happens. And it's funny because a photo came out and he's in the photo with the guy with the Confederate flag. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh my God. He's like, I don't even want to talk about this on my face. Like, people are going, people are bombarding his Facebook with comments. He's like, I don't even want to talk about it. He goes, I deleted everything that I've been talking about. He goes, I'm not even a Trump supporter. He goes, I'm not even a Trump supporter, but I'm getting Trump supporters coming yeah. to me. And they're like, yeah, fuck these fuck Black Lives Matter. Da, da, da. He's like, no, I actually support Black Lives Matter. And <laughs> Lives matter, but I do support black people as well. He's like, all right, I'm just gonna stay out of this and and not not get involved because I, I don't I don't want I don't because he's a, he he knows his look. It brings that. People yeah. Like, oh, you're a big guy and you're intimidating. I'm gonna. That's what guys like ACH and Leo's Rush. No, and I'm not I'm not I'm not picking on them. But when a black wrestler has a problem with another black wrestler, then people jump on their bandwagon and they start to use it in a negative way that's not positive. Yeah. Before I even saw the thing the ACH did to me, okay, I had other people telling me how I should feel about it and how I should respond to it. 
And I didn't. I just said, man, hey, cool, whatever. I responded to the circumstance that he's going through mentally rather than, rather than to responding to him. But then I have other people going like, fuck that motherfucker. Yo, that nigga needs to learn respect. Da, 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 da. That's not my place. I'm good. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't bring your shit into my shit. Make me try to, yo, man. That's people take your thing. narrative and they turn it into something totally different yeah. that suits their narrative. And it's like, that's not what this was about oh, in the first those place. Racist, those racist motherfuckers. I told you, Vince is not a racist. I'm sorry to tell you. I would love to tell you Vince is a racist, but guess what? You're the ones that want Samoans to be like Umaga. Because guess what? He got over way more than most people. Yeah. When he was not speaking English. You're the ones that wanted black wrestlers to wear jeans and boots because when Shelton's sitting there wrestling his ass off, you're not giving him his due credit as a professional wrestler. But when I come out in Tim's and jeans, you're like, yo, those guys speak to me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I love how this entire conversation went full circle. And we're back about why why there is every Friday. (laughs) NFG NFG Radio every Friday. Um live at 2 p.m. Pacific time and 5 p.m. Eastern time on YouTube and on Instagram until my phone dies. Um but you guys subscribe, man. This is a good episode about the culture and, and professional wrestling, and specifically WWE, man. We talked about Kofi Mania. We talked about the way the fans react to The Rock embracing his African American side. We talked about the Leo Rush situation. We, you know, everything did kind of tie in, man. We talked about how they wouldn't let you meet Mike Tyson, but it was okay for him to go do a whole thing revisiting DX. But let's not put him with crime time. But <laughs> don't put him over. Yeah. But you know, uh, I, I, and that's the thing. Uh, I don't know if you notice. We don't plan the show. So yeah, you no, know, we don't sit out the night before and plan the show. No, five minutes before the show, <laughs> I jump in the shower, I shave, clean, put on a shirt with some shorts, and my wife goes, "All right, that's good. We're out of here," and they leave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the show starts. <laughs> I just jump on here with like maybe two or three questions I know I'm gonna ask, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure Shadow carry the rest of it. <laughs> But that's the thing. We have a natural show. And yeah. We've had over 3,000 views consistently. Yeah. And I love that fans on Instagram. I love that fans on YouTube are loving it. And I love answering questions. And I love having this open environment as atmosphere. So the more that people support it, the more we can do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just it's like, just watch. You know what I'm saying? But also, actually ask us things. Or ask me, you know things that you want to know you want to know about you know what i'm saying like i don't like i don't people don't look at me as a wrestling savant because i don't project myself as one but yeah I'm business because i've been in it for so long and i've been studying it i've been in business for 15 years i'm a veteran yeah. <laughs> and i hate saying it because i started i started when i was only 22 years old well really i started from tough enough at 20 but i started in wwe at 22 years old, and I was already on TV by the time I was 25. It's wild. Come on. Yeah. I, 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 come on. I got, I got, I literally, at the age I'm at right now, most of the guys that I wrestle with were starting or continuing the career. Most guys started at 30. Dave started at Batista started at 30 years old. Yeah. Boogie Man started at 40, 30. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I'm saying? I know so much about this business because I've studied it, I've read it. I just don't talk. To, I don't talk to anybody. I don't do a bunch of podcasts. That's just me. I don't like I barely do podcasts. And it's like I would love to do more podcasts, but every time I want to do a podcast, I get cringed. Because I start watching episodes of the podcast, and I'm like, man, I don't want to answer those same questions. Yeah. I want to answer the same thing I've been asked a thousand one times. How did you get started? Bro, there's a Wikipedia for that. There's a Wikipedia yeah. For that. And we got through that in the first episode. If anyone wants to know, just go listen to our first casual conversation. Yeah. We talked about all of that. Whether this, this, I want this to be the Joe Rogan. Of yeah. Like, this having fun. Just yeah. Talking, you know what I'm saying? Actually, JTG was supposed to come on today. Yeah, we'll get them on. I think people are going to enjoy that. Because like, like, we're going to get drunk as fuck. Yeah. 
<laughs> and, we were, and people were going to walk the beach. People were like, beach is closed. I'm like, I've been walking the beach on the <laughs> week and chilling. The cops see me and they go, hey, what's up, Chad? I go, what up, guys? <laughs> so funny. I live in a very affluent area. <laughs> yeah. They don't hold us down. <laughs> so Yeah. We'll be back, guys, next week, same place, same time. You guys know where to find this, NFG Radio on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Podbean, iHeartRadio, all these places. You can check it out on NFG Radio. Make sure you subscribe and download and listen. If you can't, don't have the time to watch it, yeah. um, you can listen in audio form on those places, guys, and it's literally going to drop in the next couple of hours because uh, this is the Friday show now. And um, the video will be on later tonight too. And I also want to appreciate all of you. Like I, I noticed slowly but surely – you know, you guys are seeing like, oh, the wrestling classics posting a lot more of these interviews that he's doing and this and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you guys have enjoyed the stories I've shared because I've, I've like usually I kind of do like I'm probably do the, the same thing for this where I messed up of like highlights of a lot of the things we talked about. Yeah. But you guys have been actually enjoying it when I share like the one story about the Undertaker, the one story about JBL. A lot of people w- loved the story about JBL last week. They didn't. They oh. never heard that Joey Styles JBL fight. They you know. Heard that. Yeah, and it's crazy. Like, they might not be commenting, but I've been getting a lot of DMs like, yo, it's so cool that you're doing this. It's so cool they shared that story. Like, um, you know, a wrestling historian, like, threw in a story and I was like, I can't even believe you shared that. And I'm like, no, you guys don't understand. Like, Shad is open to answer your guys' questions. When I say that, I'm not taking it lightly. This isn't one of those situations where it's like, he can't say this, so he's not going to say that. He's he's very honest. He has good relationships with people, and he'll tell the stories that he feels fit to tell. Um <laughs> That's one of the things with you. Like I, I told you that, uh, you know what I'm saying? Well, your show is dope. Keep it going. I saw it go. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's one thing I told you. You have a you have a really good knowledge as a fan as a, and on inside of the business. You know what I'm saying? And because of that, we can have we have conversations that I can't have with regular interviewers who don't know anything. Yeah. You know, they're fans. And it's like when you're just a fan, I can't really talk to you about everything because it's like even like when I'm talking, I'm, I'm telling a story. You'll be like, and I'm saying, like, if I say Joey, you'll be like, he's talking about Joey Style because yeah, man, that I don't relate to that. I don't think people don't know who Joey is. I like my, I'm like, everybody knows who Joey is. You know what I'm saying? Because it's yeah. just how my mind works. But that's why we get along. It's because you actually genuinely know the business from both spectrums. And I've become so mentally like trained after running this page for five years of like having to explain things to the fans. You know what I mean? That's a thing. And that's because I've always trying to make that connection with them. And I, and I know when they're not going to pick up on something. I also, I, I, I don't have a narrative here. Like I, I, I'm, I'm not talk, to talk about myself a lot, but just like, I do strongly believe like I'm never going to stop watching wrestling. I love professional wrestling. I have a love for it and appreciating for it. It's been my form of escapism my entire life that my goal is to get people to enjoy it and watch it. I don't have a narrative here to complain about this and complain about that and say this sucks or that sucks. Do I do you think something is unique and weird? Like, oh yeah, I was very curious about why Vince is so against the word wrestling. It's been something I've really been curious yeah, about. Asked that. Asked that. But then don't get me wrong. It doesn't make me hate, like hate wrestling. I'm not angry about it. What I think some people that love this business sometimes or love it to the equal amount I do, but they have like this, like, negativity in them about it like that's yeah. stupid that he's like that i understand i get it that makes sense the way you described it was perfect yeah you can call it wrestling or you can be a wwe superstar yeah. do you want to be a wrestler or a wwe superstar they actually are two different things and then when you say that oh is this wrestling or sports entertainment yeah wrestling is that sports entertainment is this that makes sense why you want to avoid it stuff like that well, you know what, i you appreciate know, that you know you know what uh it is it's one of those things to me also where uh what I was saying. I have no idea what this is doing, right? <laughs> My phone just went crazy for a second. No, it's also one of those things where I I I I try to get people to understand that, you know what I'm saying, um most wrestlers who come in the company, they don't talk to Vince. Yeah. There's a lot of guys who've never talked to Vince. There's a lot of guys who who put Vince on a pedestal. That he does that in in my in my opinion, he never wants to be on. He just wants to be one of the boys. He wants to have a relationship with guys. You know what I'm saying? Because he was denied that so long. Uh, if you just watch the Legion of Doom beyond uh, Dark Side of the Ring, yeah, it took everybody's finisher. That's a shoot story. Yeah, that's a shoot story. Yeah. I was in Bret Hart's book too. If you guys read Bret's book, I recommend it. it's a really good book. Yeah. So it's one of those things where I'm telling you from the perspective of 
I'm a guy that talks to Vince, that's been on this plane, that's had genuine conversations with him, so I understand how his mind works. I'm not a guy that kisses ass. I'm not a guy that kowtow to him. I'm a guy that actually got to know the real man and not the persona on TV. I'm also a guy that is genuine with the majority of the boys. You know, I don't just have a certain circle of friends and we only hang out and talk about video games. Or yeah. Actually, no, I, I talk to everybody. And guess what? Don't everybody like me? Don't everybody, I don't need anybody to like me. You know what I'm saying? And the guys that don't like me, they still respect the fuck out of me and won't fight me. <laughs> and that's the thing about you yeah. is that you're yeah. like, does just come on. That's so, the thing about you too is that like the reason why this works and why your stories come off more genuine and real and stuff is that I don't know. And I can't, I'm speaking from a fan perspective, so I could be wrong, but I've, I have spoken to wrestlers that do seem a little bitter about yeah. that time or what their time was like there where it's like, regardless what happened with you, you had a blast there. You have a bunch of memories and it was a good time and it was a fun time and you want to share it. Uh, Did yeah. some stuff not go your way? Yeah. You've told us, you told like this whole Mike Tyson thing that didn't go your way, but you didn't share it in a way that you were pissed about it. You're like, that happened. No, nah, I think of it like this. <laughs> I went to a party. I got really drunk. <laughs> I fell down the stairs. All right. And I woke up and I found a hundred dollars in my pocket. Had a good time. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna wrap it up there because I don't think you can wrap it up any better. WWE. <laughs> That's how we're gonna wrap it up, guys. Join us next week. Ask your questions. Join us. I do appreciate it. a lot of you did hop on YouTube today and did ask questions. I'm sorry we didn't get to all of them. Once again, we want you to ask them and I try to get to them. Um, and if not, try again next week. We will answer them eventually. We're trying to do this every week. Next week, if we can open up with people's questions. Yeah. We'll yeah. First half an hour, all questions. Yeah, possibly my fault. I really just want to talk about Kofi Mania because the <laughs> week I had, the yeah. week I had, and then I was like, "That's a good conversation to have." <laughs> but uh, we'll see you guys on next week. Uh, next week, wow, can't That's even talk no more. And we'll keep doing the thing, man. NFG, no fucks given. Yeah, yeah every Friday. Friday. Ooh, yeah, dig it. <laughs> Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.